Good day, fellow investors. One of the best ways to analyze a business to see whether it is an investment for you or not are to use Buffett's owner's earnings. And he explained his tactics when it comes to analyzing businesses in his 1986 letter to shareholders. A long time has passed since some accounting things have changed, but we are going to explain in details using Netflix and Apple as an example. We're going to explain owner's earnings and you'll see how whenever you analyze a company, whenever you look at potential investment, this will come in handy. Before we start with the details of accounting, the best way to teach something is to use storytelling. And a great story came to my mind while I was thinking about this video. This weekend we were in Graz, which is a city in Austria, and we were visiting just a small family vacation, and we were sleeping at Hotel Park in Graz, which is a traditional hotel there, and it is owned and managed by the fourth generation. So it is a family hotel, and little Paulina was born in 2016, and she'll be the fifth generation managing the hotel. And when you have such a hotel, where the family is the owner, do they care about the valuation of the hotel, the stock price when you look at businesses? Do they care about EBITDA? Do they care about their credit ratings by the ratings agency? Do they care about how the market will do in the next year? Will there be a recession or not? Do they care about, I don't know, what else is going on with the trade war? Or they just care about something else? Well, they care about what is the amount of money they can take out from the hotel after all the expenses are paid. That is what they really care about. And then when they have that available money, they want to see, okay, can we invest in growth? Can we do some changes in the hotel? Or can we just take it out, pay ourselves some dividends and live off the property that we own. Just one note here, if all the other ho hotels in Graz decide to build a roof pool or something like that, then the hotel where we stayed should build a, the same pool and that's not growth. That is an investment just to keep its market share. And that's something very important when it comes to capital expenditures that we'll explain in a moment. So when it comes to investing in businesses, you have to see, okay, what can I take out from that business year over year over year or reinvest in growth? So when it comes to businesses, you have to look, okay, what can I take out from the business? And then I am going to decide whether to reinvest in growth or pay myself a dividend. Those are owner's earnings. And that is what Buffett has always been focused on when investing. What are the owner's earnings alongside growth and other things? But let's focus on the accounting here. Let's explain it in details. Let's define it and let's use Netflix and Apple, which are very, very interesting examples. To define owner's earnings, Buffett defines owner's earnings from the letter as following. Owner's earnings. These represent reported earnings plus depreciation, depletion, amortization and certain other non-cash charges such as company ends items 1 and 4 less the average annual amount of capitalized expenditures for plant and equipment etc. that the business requires to fully maintain its long-term competitive position and its unit volume. If the business requires additional working capital to maintain its competitive position and unit volume, the increment also should be included in the average annual amount of capitalized expenditures in C. However, businesses following the LIFO inventory method usually do not require additional working capital if unit volume does not change. So this is a lot. Let me simplify the above and then define the accounts. So owner's earnings are reported earnings plus depreciation, depletion, amortization, other non-cash charges like impairments, for example, minus the average annual capex amount that is needed to fully maintain the long-term competitive position and unit volume of the business minus working capital changes. If those changes are negative, then minus and minus gives a plus. 
Let's define reported earnings. You can find reported earnings at the bottom of the income statement. Earnings are what the company makes after deducting all the accounting expenses from revenues. In this case, Netflix for 2018 had net income of 1.2 billion dollars. So that's the net income and we'll use it to compare and to see what is the actual owner's earnings for Netflix. The next step is to calculate depreciation, depletion and amortization and actually add it to owner's earnings. What's the deal with depreciation and amortization? When you invest into something over the long term, you take a lump sum of money and you invest it, let's say, in a building, in an office. The thing is that to incentivize investments, one thing has been invented, which is amortization and depreciation. If you invest in a building, it usually doesn't lose value over the next 40 years, but you can charge the, your investment, you can charge the expense over the next 20 to 50 years, depending on the building and the accounting rules. So let's say you buy an office building and you can depreciate it by 25 years, so 4% per year. So if you invested a million, 40% would be an expense to the income statement, but not a cash expense. So you would have that cash left over on that expense, you didn't pay taxes. So businesses are incentivized to invest and improve the economy through amortization and depreciation. Plus they pay less taxes over the long term. So you invest and with depreciation, it allows you to get your money back. And that's why Warren Buffett adds it to net income. So you can find depreciation, amortization and other non-cash charges in the cash flow statement. Here I have marked it in yellow and we can see that amortization of streaming content assets was 7.5 billion in 2018, amortization of DVD content assets 41 million, 83 million dep depreciation and amortization of property equipment and intangibles. Something that I've marked here in pink are stock-based compensation expenses. Some immediately add those two to the calculation, but I would avoid that as stock-based compensation expense is an actual expense that dilutes shareholders in the long term. And it's the same if you give stocks and then repurchase them or simply give money to managers or whoever gets those share-based compensations. So I won't use the, them, I won't add them to net income as some might do. So it's up to you to pick what is that. Is it an expense or not? Non-cash charges, the other account mentioned by Buffett, include stock-based compensation and other non-cash items. Other non-cash items include deferred income tax, write-downs in the value of acquired companies, which is what Buffett discusses. However, Wall Street has quickly added stock-based compensation as a non-expense due to the non-cash form. But as I said, I see it as an expense. In any case, net income from Netflix, 1.2 billion. We add the amortization of streaming content assets, amortization of DVD content assets, depreciation and amortization of property, stock-based compensation expense, that's how you will find it. Some textbooks, other non-cash items. And we are at 8.9 billion of owner's earnings. Sounds much better than 1.2 billion. But now we have to account for the average annual capital expenditures that are needed to fully maintain the long-term competitive position and unit volume of the business. So capital expenditures, there are two types of capital expenditures, expenditures for growth and expenditures that maintain the business as is, maintain, it, maintain its competitive position, thus the status quo. To keep the business rate running, what's necessary to invest to just keep the business running as is. So the biggest expense for Netflix is content and they have to acquire it. And for me, it's not an investment in growth because 
they scale on the number of users, but it's not that if they buy more content, they get more users. So it's actually not growth. It's just their business. They have to acquire content. So it's an investment necessary to maintain its competitive position. And here we can see in the green lines, 13 billion spent in 2018 to acquire streaming content. There are some other investing activities like DVD content assets, 38 million, property, plant and equipment, 173 million, and other changes in assets, 126 million, depending what it was. So when we deduct 13 billion from the previous owner's earnings that we received by adding the amortization and depreciation of 8.9 billion, we get to owner's earnings of negative 4.2 billion. That's already a big difference when compared to 1.2 billion reported in net income. But we still have to account for possible changes in working capital. Working capital is defined as the difference between a company's current assets and current liabilities. Working capital is a measure of a company's short-term liquidity or its ability to cover short-term liabilities. We can calculate the working capital from the current asset and current liabilities accounts on the balance sheet. So Netflix's total current assets 2018, 9.6 billion, total current liabilities 6.4 billion, compare it to 2017, and the respective increase in working capital is 1 billion. That has to be, again, deducted from the business and the owner's earnings because they need to put 1 billion more into the business to keep it as is. And we are now at negative owner's earnings of 5.2 billion. Practically from Buffett's perspective, Netflix is losing 5.2 billion per year for its owners. And if you look at the balance sheet, you can see total liabilities increased by 5.3 billion from 2017 to the end of 2018, which is exactly the loss they made for their owners. So this is what Buffett focuses on and what made him what he is today. Now, you might wonder why does Netflix have a 120 billion market capitalization when they lose 5 billion, 5.5 billion per year for their owners? Where here it's a game of growth. Netflix is a growth company. And if they can keep the content costs stable at 13 billion, but grow, continue to grow at 26% as they have been doing in the past, over the next three years, their revenue will double, but their content that they can scale on a global level would remain the same. So from losses now 5.5 billion down, if they double revenue, if they bring it to 40 billion, pay 20% on taxes on the difference with the same costs, then they would add 16 billion of profits on that. 16 billion minus the 5.5 they are losing now, that's 11 billion of owner's earnings on a 120 billion market cap, that's a bargain, especially if they continue to grow like this over the long term. So this is the game with Netflix, not the current owner's earnings, which is usually something Buffett is focusing on, but the potential future owner's earnings, thanks to the scalability of their business with keeping costs fix, fixed. If they can keep the cost fixed, then an increase revenue then it will be a profitable business for owners. Until they don't, they manage to do that, then it will be a losing business for owners. Let's do another example where Buffett owns a significant stake, Apple, as we used for Netflix, I'm going to do the same with Apple and use 2018 as the numbers. Net income for 2018 was 59.5 billion, we have to add depreciation, depletion, amortization, other non-cash charges to the above net income from the cash flow. And we have to make a small adjustment. Again, always such adjustments with all companies. Uh, Apple had a lot of profits abroad. If they would repatriate that, that would hit severely their taxes. But as the tax went down in 2018, they made a lot of deferred taxes, benefits and liabilities in their accounts for the future. So that is something I'm going to avoid talking here so that it doesn't confuse you. So let's focus on the depreciation and amortization of 10.9 billion. Add that to the 59.5 billion and we get to 70.4 billion. On capital expenditures, Apple is spending 
around 13 billion per year we can also find that in the cash flow statement we can estimate that it is all to stay in business money as the acquisitions account amounts to only 721 million per year we deduct 13 billion from 70 billion and we get to 57 billion of owners earnings per year we still have to adjust for working capital and when we calculate the working capital again an adjustment here marketable securities with apple the second yellow line here is not something they use in their business it's just the cash they have stashed so i'm going to not account for that when i account for all the other current assets and liabilities you can see that 2018 and 2017 there was negative working capital of 26 billion so there was no change so we don't have to account for that with apple's owner's earnings if you wonder how can there be negative working capital well apple's business is financed by its suppliers when you buy a phone you buy it immediately when they pay their suppliers they pay later they have some debt short-term debt which means that they are financing their business their working capital with debt and suppliers that's a great business model shareholders don't have to put up the money and apple can distribute do buybacks that it usually does and reward shareholders in that way so i hope i have explained well what owners earnings are the conclusion is that okay okay buffett uses them so it's always interesting to check what are the real on owners earnings compare it to the growth and the real story compare it also to the accounting earnings as we have seen a big difference with netflix and it will give you a better understanding of what the business actually is that is what owners earnings are crucial they are crucial for investing especially when you start thinking about what will be the owner's earnings in the future depending on the what the company is doing now and the possibility of the company with high growth companies like netflix it's a little bit difficult to see what's the real value there because we don't know what will be the growth rate in the future the growth rate of the costs or perhaps even the decline in the costs of content it will be something very interesting to follow but when you can make models using earnings owners earnings like buffett did on a business then you know the business really well and then you can estimate whether it is undervalued or overvalued in relation to your investment uh, thesis and requirements this is what i do all the time i try to find okay what are the benefits that the business will bring to me as a shareholder over the long term when i can figure that out from the accounting and everything and when i see that it offers me a high yield from the business then that is something that i like buying so looking forward to your comments thank you for watching don't forget to subscribe smash that like button and comment ask a question send me an email check my website for my research if you want to read my research reports so check my website and i'll see you in the next video